When I first arrived at the Singapore American School for New Teacher Orientation, I was greeted by my colleagues who said, welcome to Asia Light, which is to mean the street signs in Singapore aren't written in Japanese, and the menus at my favorite Chinese food restaurants are in English, and there is no manila traffic just vanilla accents of Americans saying, this international school is easy for people like you. But who is it not easy for? I am teaching Amy Tan's fish cheeks when a student raises his hand in the class and says, Mr. Fine, I want a slim American nose and blonde hair. And he stretches his eyes wide with his fingers until his eyes are Asia light, and I am thrown back to the 1950s when Dr. Ralph Millard took Korean patients and performed occidentalization surgery, also known as double eyelid surgery, so they would look more American. And I am wondering, not just the physical alterations that are performed by Americans on international communities, but what about the surgeries performed on the psyches of our students, particularly in Southeast Asia, where I teach? And I wonder what generations are lost and what cultures are stolen when students enter into our international schools? What cultural genocides are committed, not just by our friendly neighbors in North America, but our schools abroad? And I wonder, for students whose native names weigh heavy on our tongues, do we consider their English ones Asia light? What savior complexes do we adopt when uplifting our students as if they need to be saved from their cultures in the first place? When we award them diplomas of whiteness in our international schools, not just in America, but abroad. And this is not just a history lesson, particularly looking at an article that examined international mindedness and in global citizenship. Uh, this particular writer noticed the spread of education from the West with an influx of teachers coming into international schools and then adopting and teaching a Eurocentric and American centric curriculum. But there's a reason why I'm teaching internationally, because the values espoused by international schools are absolutely beautiful. In the very name international school, the international gives me an obligation to uphold the mutual exchange of diverse cultures and diverse ways of being and diverse worldviews. And that's absolutely beautiful. But I wasn't expecting to have this conversation about social justice internationally. This is work I do stateside, with the history of slavery and Jim Crow and segregation. I do a lot of work with the Teaching Tolerance Advisory Board as a former advisory board member and a practitioner of social justice teaching. And when I look at the work that I've done stateside, I see particular relevance to my international communities in spaces like this, but also back at my school in Singapore where I see it as a moral imperative for me to sustain my students' identities, to embrace their beautiful, diverse perspectives, to act against the social injustices that they face. Because when I look at my students, or more importantly, when my students look at themselves, I want them to love what they see. Thank you.